Imagine not being able to read the paper because your hands were shaking. Imagine not being able to read newsprint as your world faded to black. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline Indiana. With your host, Lee Barton, and co-host, Florence Myers. Welcome to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline, Indiana. And we are glad to be back with you today as we share so much valuable information. And we have a very special guest today on our show. And I tell you, once you hear this individual speak and share his life journey with us, you will leave impressed as I am impressed with this individual, basically since the days that I met him. So today our guest is all the way from Ohio and it's Mr. Jordy D. Springer. And Mr. Springer is an executive director uh, of the Southeast Ohio Center for statewide independent living. So we're here today with Mr. Stringer. And before we bring Mr. Stringer on, he and I will share with you some information because he's an avid um, subscriber to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline service. And I want to welcome you to the show, Mr. Stringer. How are you today, sir? Thank you for having me, uh, Lee. Um, well, uh, very, very well here. It's a little bit of a cold morning here in Ohio, uh, but I'm nice and warm in my office here in downtown Lancaster. So very excited to be with you this morning. Well, I, I'll tell you, we here at the National Federation of the Blind Newsline, Indiana, and I'm sure our viewers and listeners um, are glad to have you and will be understanding why we're glad to have you on today. Uh, you have so much information to share and the amount of time that we have in one show is not just not going to be enough. So we may have to have you come back in the very near future as well. So first of all, we want to talk about the NFB Newsline service. The National Federation of the Blind Newsline is a free audio information service with over 500 publications. We have international publications. We have uh, national publications, such as the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, the Washington Post, the New York Times. All of this is free access. Then we have your local publications. We also have publications in Spanish. And I tell you, one of my favorite publications that I love to read um, from the publications uh, is the New York Times. I like reading uh, the Washington Post as well. And uh, locally, I love reading the Indianapolis Star and also the Muncie Star Press. I'm originally from Muncie, Indiana, and I do have free access. Jordy, you read the publications. What are some of your favorite publications with the NFB Newsline? Um, so I news, use Newsline for, for a couple different things. Um, uh, TV listings, uh, it's, it's almost impossible to find uh, what's on TV, uh, you know, as an individual who's not able to use one of the regular kind of uh, guides that are available. And so Newsline has TV listings and channels and different things on it. So that's something that I find very, very useful. Um, when I was uh, searching for employment, um, I was able to use Newsline as a tool to to look for employment opportunities. Uh, it's just it's so valuable. I was able to, to to read some of the circular ads to find out what things are on sale in grocery stores near me. I mean, it's just an invaluable tool. Um, it's also a place um, that you can you know find leisure, things to read, as you talked about articles in the New York Times. Just a, just a wealth of, of information. But those are the, the things that I think I use Newsline for the most is looking at looking at those circulars and and also trying to figure out the TV listings. It also uh, will tell you the weather uh, where you are locally as well. So I, I tend to use it for that sometimes uh, when I'm in a in a different city. Um, so it's just super, super valuable. And I'm glad that I have it available. I use the mobile version, mm -hmm. a couple different versions of it. And so I primarily use the iOS uh, version of Newsline, and uh, just it's super valuable. I can't say how valuable it is. 
Also, uh, as you have mentioned there, devices, you know, we have a, a plethora of devices that we can access the service on. Um, like you said, the iOS device uh, with the iPhone, and uh, you also can use the uh, Android phone uh, as we also improve that uh, Android um, uh, device to uh, work with the or become more compatible with the NFB Newsline service. Uh, we also have the uh, Victor Reader Stream, which a lot of individuals use, the computer. Uh, you can also use the A-Lady, which is Amazon Alexa. And um, there's so many different devices that we can use in a no number of ways to access this free audio audible information service. So please, once again, pay attention to the uh, commercials and, and, and grab that information uh, so that we can get you subscribed to this uh, service. Uh, you'll find that it will mean the world to us as blind and print challenge citizens. So we're gonna take a short break and we're gonna come back with our guest, Mr. Jordy D. Springer. I just graduated college as a blind student. How can I independently find job listings? Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. It is a fantastic service. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind and we read NFB Newsline. Welcome back to the National Federation of the Blind, Indiana. And our guest today is Mr. Jordy D. Springer, all the way from the great state of Ohio. And Mr. Stringer, I tell you, it is my pleasure to have you once again to uh, this program. And let's get started on what you have to share with us. So first, let's, let's talk about um, you, young Jordy. You know, I believe as the host of this show that there are so many people that have a journey and we have similar journeys. And Jordy, mm -hmm. your journey is so unique to me and we just wanna get it out there to everyone because there's someone out there that's traveling down the same road as, as you have in your life. Some parent, uh, some young person, that's trying to find their way. So let's talk about how life was for you and your family as young Jordy. Sure. So, um, so I was born in the in the eighties uh, in Columbus, Ohio. Grew up in inner city Columbus, um, uh, uh, just a small kind of neighborhood, very close knit neighborhood. Um, neighbors knew each other we each other's names <clears throat> had a lot of just interaction with with folks in the community uh growing up and so that actually kind of helped i think with regard to to my blindness i was born totally i was born basically totally blind with um cone rod dystrophy uh and had very 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 limited vision uh as a young child um I wouldn't even consider it to be usable vision, frankly. Uh, I read Braille uh, starting at three years old. Um, and so so that that's kind of how I started kind of just learning. Uh, it, it was just reading Braille at that very young age. Um, I have a couple of siblings. I am the oldest of four siblings. Um, and uh, we are all... Um, you know, adults now, but it was just a really interesting kind of childhood. Me being the oldest kid um, and being totally blind, I there was a couple things that, interestingly enough, some of my younger siblings did before me. Um, I, I think about uh, being eight or nine years old and not being able to know, know how to tie my shoe. Uh, and my younger brother, who uh, is about three years younger than me, I think, I think he's three years younger than me, um, you know, knew how to do that, you know, prior, you know, before me. And it was, I thought, I, I, I learned later, it was because, you know, he could visually see what people were doing. Like, I, I was just kind of told what to do. So it was a really 
interesting experience learning even how to to tie shoes and and those kinds of things. Um, I I think about things like learning how to ride a bike, which I didn't do until later in life. Um, but I can remember watching my siblings, you know, in the yard and in the neighborhood, you know, running with our with our neighbors, and I and I couldn't do that because, you know, my my mom and my grandma, those are the the, the parental folks who I grew up with very uh, lovely ladies who cared a lot uh, for both myself and, and my siblings, uh, but were, I wouldn't say overprotective, but I think very cautious because it was our family's first experience with, with blindness, uh, to my knowledge. Um, I don't know of any other relatives or, or any of my other uh, close family that have any, you know, have any blindness or any vision issues at all. And so we really, I think they were apprehensive about that. I was supposed to be totally blind um, prior to, to being 10 years old. And it didn't happen until quite a bit later than that. And so I think, you know, to, to, to be safe, I think um, my family wanted me to be very cautious. Um, I grew out of that. I grew out of that uh, probably more quickly than they would have liked. Um, but it really was a, a really good experience, you know, growing up, um, very supportive family. My grandma, uh, best lady in the world, you know, uh, taught me how to write, taught me how to cook, taught me how to do so many things, even as a young person. And uh, so it was just, a, it was just a great experience, I, I think. Uh, I went to a school uh, called Leewood Elementary. Uh, and this, I was the, wasn't the only t- uh, total, you know, student who had a visual impairment. So that was something to me that was always normalized, was being visually impaired. It, to me, it was normal. I never thought anything, I never really thought about it being uh, you know, an oddity or, you know, having a, a low incidence disability as I now know it as an adult, you know, I never thought about that. So it was just a, uh, it was, it was a great experience. I had a, um, a chance to, like I said, be in school with individuals who also had visual impairments. So I had friends, lots of times, you know, as a blind child, you can be very isolated. And fortunately for me uh, and students, you know, who were able to participate in that program, we, we didn't experience that same level of isolation that that you know kids who are blind uh, experience these days, or, or or could experience even in those days. So it was just a it was just a, a fun time, and ultimately, I feel like I was just a regular kid. I feel like I I, I picked up on some things a little bit later than than some, uh, but I ultimately was was a regular kid. But you know that that is so important that you. Um have the capacity and that your, 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 your grandmother and your mother uh, really, you know, kind of let you be free and, and let you grow and, and educate you and try to bring you along and not, uh, um, you know, keep you uh, sheltered, so to speak. Because uh, yeah. I, I know your free spirit, you know, and I, I, that's one of the first things that I noticed about you um, as I, came into the world of blindness. And uh, um, I noticed that you're free spirit. And I also noticed uh, your, how competent you are uh, with your Braille. And uh, as in our organization, we know that the uh, Braille readers are leaders and mm-hmm. uh, that you have certainly become. So what would you say to uh, individuals that who think nowadays that technology uh, kind of, uh, overshadows Braille uh, for the uh, blind and print challenge? I think I would say to anyone who suggests that, that, and you hear this a lot, Braille is obsolete, completely not obsolete. I personally uh, am of the opinion that if an individual can't read Braille, uh, they they are not able to do things um, in in a real natural independent way. If you can't read Braille and you go to a to to uh, a hotel, you, you won't be able to find your room. Uh, you won't even be able to go to the bathroom. You don't know which sign is what. You know you you're guessing at that point. And so I think it's paramount that individuals um, who uh, who are blind and visually impaired gain that skill. Um, my competency, I think, with Braille came a little bit later. Um, I. I like all kids and was hesitant and reluctant to to learn and and do some things that I that I know now were good for me and so that's the the advice I would give is to to listen to those folks who have traveled that path before you um, particularly as it pertains to literacy literacy means employment literacy means independence 
Uh, literacy means so so many things, and, and as an individual you, who uses Braille, um, that that's in my work. I, I use it so much every every day. I am surrounded by Braille. Even uh, as technology advances, I use a Braille display uh, for certain things, and so Braille is not obsolete. I would even suggest that now uh, across the nation there are state libraries, uh, and Indiana is probably going to be one of these who are giving out Braille devices to you know their patrons so that they can have access to 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 written uh, information printed information so the fact that 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 all the others you know everybody else in the country thinks that it's uh not obsolete to me speaks volumes and i would encourage anybody uh to take advantage of learning braille uh and if you need braille there's so many places that you can get it and especially in the national federation of the blind we we really believe in braille literacy so thanks for that question appreciate it Yes, and I'll tell you one um, alarming figure, though, when we get to talking about Braille literacy, that uh, the statistics indicate that only one out of every 10 uh, blind individuals um, actually read Braille. Mm. So it's something that we really have to work on. And I think that the uh, uh, having the, um, the, the uh, Braille devices uh, out there, I, I tell you, in, even with NFB Newsline, uh, you can use the uh, uh, Braille devices to uh, access the service as well. So, Absolutely. you know, so we're going to take us a short break. And I really enjoy that uh, learning about you there. And we're going to learn more about Mr. Jordy D. Springer after we come back from this commercial break. So stay tuned. <laughs> If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. I use NFB Newsline when reading Hammond Northwest Times. Using NFB Newsline, I read the Christian Science Magazine. Dad, you read your Lucid and Post too. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Live the life you want. Read NFB Newsline. It's free. Welcome back to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline, Indiana. And we're talking with our guest, Mr. Jordy D. Stringer. And we have shared so much about and learned so much about Mr. Stringer in the first section. And we're gonna move right on here. Jordy, tell us a little bit about, you, you joined an organization, uh, one of the largest organizations of organized blind citizens, the National Federation of the Blind. And how did you get there? My first experience with the National Federation of the Blind was back in 1998. Um, I was a sophomore in high school, and there was a program that uh, the Ohio affiliate, in conjunction with the state agency, had put on for blind sophomores. It was a transition program, and I found um, the National Federation of the Blind at that time. Um, it was a program. It was over the weekend, and kind of talked through through uh, some ideas about blindness and kind of what that meant to us. They set us up with some mentors because at, at that time, I really hadn't had a lot of blind mentors. There was one person that I knew from uh, being, uh, who had, was a substitute teacher uh, growing up, but I never had any real blind role models. So my first blind role model was Dr. J.W. Smith, who I understand has been on the program. So uh, I'm glad to be able to, to, to sit here and talk with you as he did, uh, but he was my first mentor. And so I just learned a lot about myself, but really was still uh, kind of apprehensive. You know, people talk about, you know, radical organization and those kinds of things. And I was a teenager and I just I was really un unsure. So it took me a little while to, to come back to the National Federation of the Blind. So if I can fast forward about 10 years in 2008, I attended my very first national convention um, at the uh, I think Dr. Smith was the Ohio affiliate president at that time. Maybe it was Barbara Pierce. I can't recall. But. Nevertheless, um, they, they gave me an opportunity to attend this event that I heard so much about, and there was just so much excitement in my mind around this. Um, to be honest with you, I, I came to the National Federation of the Blind because I heard it was uh, you know, a place where you could go and you could find the party. And that's really truthfully what I came for, but I found so much more beyond 
the idea of having a good time. I mean, this, this mm -hmm. organization changed the way I thought not only about myself, uh, but about my blindness and really kind of put me on the path towards advocacy. Um, I, I'll just tell you quickly, I had an opportunity to, through the, those interactions, meet some people. Uh, a couple of years later, I ended up getting appointed, uh, appointed to a board position in the National Performing Arts Division, which was, I think, my first real leadership experience um, as an adult. Uh, this happened in 2010. And so that it gave me a chance to to not only network with blind people all over the nation, um, but it gave me a chance to really figure out what kind of leadership style I was going to adopt uh, moving forward. Um, and and so I did that for a number of years, and, and I really think that that put me really on the path towards advocacy. Uh, we do things like Washington Seminar. I got to attend my first Washington Seminar with the National Federation of the Blind in 2010, I think. Um, and, and, and I just, I never had that kind of experience before talking to legislators and those kinds of things. And it turns out I've got a knack for it. So, um, it, I think those experiences really put me on the path towards advocacy, uh, and, and especially with regard to what I do now. So. Okay. I, I tell you, you know, as a student, as a young person, I mean, that particular journey and being introduced to the National Federation of the Blind, I mean, and where you come to today. Uh, I mean, it, I mean, you're just a great example of, um, of wherewithal and, and, and stick to itiveness. And I, I, I tell you, um, we're going to talk a little bit more here. I want to find out, you know, as an executive director, talk about how you prepare for that and how did you become an executive director? Um, it really uh, came from my as you talked about kind of staying power and tenacity, um, you know, education has not necessarily been a particularly strong area for me. Um, I, my, the, this path has come with twists and turns and rocks and falls and all those kinds of things. And really, I think my, the stability of the National Federation of the Blind helped direct that. Uh, in fact, the position uh, uh, previous to this, um, I acquired through a National Federation of the Blind listserv um, so the listservs uh, that we have are really important for, for those looking for employment, but that's how I actually got this uh, job. And it was, the title at that time was Independent Living Advocate. Um, and it was a really interesting uh, position. I ended up having to move to a place where um, there was a lot of barriers, frankly, a lot of transportation barriers, a lot of access issues. But I, I felt like I was uh, confident and competent enough at that time to, to make that move. I wanted to make that move. I wanted to be employed. I wanted to contribute. I wanted to be able to, to provide for, you know, my, my daughter. I have a, a she's, uh, it will be 13 this year. So I really was, was trying to figure out how, how I was going to live my life and, and, and really wanted to be successful. And I saw this opportunity as, a, as an independent living advocate as a stepping stone towards um, some other kind of administrative work. And so I did that for a number of years. Um, happens uh, that our executive director here at our agency was preparing for retirement, which I had no idea. And she came to me one day and said, hey, you know, you look like you really have some potential. Would you be interested in being, you know, ED? And I said, well, yeah, of course I want to be ED, but how's that going to work? Um, and so we worked through, uh, you know, a secession plan and I learned all of the things I would need to do. And some of those things were daunting, man. I, but for, you know, having access to Braille and technology, I'm not sure that being in this position, I would be able to, to do it. But that's kind of how I got here um, in, the, in the short story. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, Jordy, I, I tell you, I, just watching you grow over the years, um, I am so proud of you. And I know that your family and your peers in this organization is really, really proud of you and what you do. I tell you, I wish we had a ton of more time. So we're going to take a short pause and we're going to come back with the conclusion of our program today. So stay tuned. <music> I'm Danny Wayne Beamer, Program Manager of the Elder Blind Program at the Will Center in Terre Haute, Indiana. I introduce the NFB Newsline to seniors in 13 southwestern counties in Indiana. I also utilize the NFB Newsline for my radio station public affairs shows. 
The NFB Newsline. Experience it today. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's line and we read NFB Newsline. The National Federation of the Blind knows that blindness is not the characteristic that defines you or your future. Every day we raise the expectations of blind people because low expectations create obstacles between blind people and our dreams. You can live the life you want. Blindness is not what holds you back. Welcome back to the conclusion of our show. And I'm sure that our viewers and listening audience have enjoyed the show today. And Mr. Stringer, I want to thank you once again for coming on to the show and sharing so much with us. And we will have you back. So what is your favorite quote? I've got a lot of them, but one that really resonates with me, and I, I can't recall the author's name, um, but it's, it's, it's just something like, choose a path to walk and do it, no matter how narrow or crooked it is. And to me, that basically says, you know, pick a path. It's not always going to be an easy path, but if you stay on it, you're going to have some twists, you're going to have some turns, but eventually you will, you will get there. That's great. Now, another question I have for you. Uh, what type of impression do you want to leave upon the world? I want to leave a good impression. I want to leave an impression of, of work and service and compassion for, for individuals um, I, I want the impression that people uh, have of me to be one that um, will be talked about for a long time in a, in a, in a positive way. So I think a, a good one, a positive one, one that my daughter will be proud uh, when she hears my name, when, she, when I'm no longer here. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, think that's, I think that's what kind of impression I want to leave on the world. Well, Jordy, I tell you, you've left an impression upon me and I've had it for quite some time. And I just wanna say thank you. So well, thank, thank you, you for, for having me, I appreciate it. And thank you for coming on to the show. And listening and viewing audience, please join us again next week as we come on with a brand new show. And during the meantime, just take care of yourselves and your family and your community and God bless. National Federation of the Blind, Newsline, Indiana. For more information, go to nfb-in.org or call 855-963-6476. That's 855-963-6476. The National Federation of the Blind encourages you to live the life you want.